So the, uh, the idea is that uh, you know what the nervous system looks like, right? There are a bunch of nerves that run throughout the body. And uh, acupuncture channels these uh, meridians or pathways that run through the body are similar to the nervous system, but there are much more subtle systems that lie beneath that, okay? And what acupuncture, uh, what these uh, various different meridian and pathways do is they foster balance the rest of the system, including the organ system, the nervous system, the lymphatic system, all those different systems feed off of the energy through adjusting these channels. So when I treat somebody and we balance their energy, it has a systemic effect, an overall effect on how these other systems work, and work more effectively and optimally. So the idea is to simply rebalance the system, encourage it, act as, act as a kind of catalyst. You know what that means? So catalyst means that I help nudge the system back into a better state of balance. Your bodies are, or your systems are already incredibly intelligent. I mean, we're just at the tip of understanding how our systems work. So what I do from that standpoint is encourage that. Now, what makes me different than a lot of acupuncturists is, first of all, I do do inserted needling. It goes for a lot of pain conditions, but I can also do non-insertive acupuncture, which really forms the core of what I do, because it treats the root of the imbalance. When I treat the root of the imbalance, you may come in with a symptom of back pain, but you may have other things going on, like headaches, migraines, you know, whatever you know, might come from that lack of sleep. So when I rebalance your systems, it'll have not only effect on the back pain, but also on these other systems. And the idea with this, form of acupuncture is I use one needle throughout the treatment. And it's a little bit different than other needles. First of all, it's silver. It's not stainless steel. Okay? It's a little bit longer. So stainless steel is a better conductor of energy. But really what makes it difference, different is that uh, it has an oval shape at the end. If you look at it on a microscope, and if you touch it, go ahead and touch the end not sharp. Oh, I see. It's blunt. I can't find it. There you go. Oh, it doesn't feel like a needle. No. It doesn't feel like a needle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's kind of long. You put it on. It, it, well, no, I don't insert it. So what I would do, oh. you mind? Uh -huh. So what I would do, and I'm going to get somebody up here in a second. So what I would do is just treat a point. Hmm. Oh, 
right on the skin. So you I don't can, feel it at all. You can just feel that touch. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm aware of it. That's it. Yeah. Oh. Now what I'm doing is using a certain intention to focus and manipulation of the needle, <coughs> ever so slight, to redirect the energy. And it's not like I can do inserted needling all day. I can take a needle, insert it, leave, you know, generally that's what a lot of acupuncture is doing. But I never leave the patient. I'm with them the whole time and I'm directing the energy until they see it in a better state of balance. So by the time the person is finished with the treatment and off the table, their systems are in a pretty good state of balance. Then it's up to you. And then I educate you on what you can do for yourself because I might only see you one, one hour a week. Okay? So it's what you can do during that. You say, well, what can I do? Well, I can target diet. Based upon your diagnosis, I can say, okay, these are the things you want to include in your diet. These are the mm -hmm. things that maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. So this begins that process, and then I educate you on what you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because that's primary. You know, once your systems get stabilized, it's going to be up to you. Now, who wants to, who has like some shoulder pain or tightness or something like that? Back pain. You have back pain? Where's your back pain? In that lower back. Okay. I can try this. I'm usually, you know, one needle, I've just got a little bit of time here that I can give to this. You want to come up? Do you mind? Well, how about we do this? I'm going to bring this up to the crowd so that everybody's a little bit more cozy. How you doing? Okay. Yeah. Now, where's your back pain? Show me where it is. Well, right here. Very, very low. Do you have a disc issue, or is it uh, just tight? It's, um... How long has it been there? About two years. Two years? Three. Have you so had... So I also have a pain in my shoulder. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me try working with the shoulder yeah. right now, because I'd have to do a lot more work on you to do the back. But let's see what we can do with the shoulder, okay? Okay. So what I'm gonna do? Is it right here? Okay. So I'm. Well, no, that's okay. So what I want you to do is just relax. I'm gonna go to this side. I'm gonna treat the opposite side. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is place this needle over. you to just relax. Take a nice deep breath. Do you feel anything? So what I do is, first of all, get you to become aware of what you do. And second of all, this allows you the opportunity to really see what normal is like. Because your normal is maybe tight, tight and all that. And now your new normal is a little different. That's a lot different. So again, this is just touching the skin. You don't feel it, right? But I can feel heat around this point. I can, I'm engaging your energy. Like I said, my head, the neck was tight. You can just see it over there. Yeah? You okay with it? Yeah. So she's, she's receiving the treatment as well, too. What's your name? Julia. I'm sorry. Julia. 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 Yeah, Julia is taking it as well. So what I'm going to do is. So the more receptive you are, the more. Uh, yes, 
and the way that you can uh, get the person to be more receptive or the way that I do is first and foremost is to gain that sort of trust and rapport. So I talk to my uh, patients in a way that allow them to be able to feel comfortable. You know, first and foremost, I want you to be, first of all, to, to express what's going on so I have a good idea of what you know, is happening. And you know, that's really important. And then uh, second of all is, you know, if somebody comes in with a lot of back pain, let's say her back pain, she couldn't even bend over. Julia I just had major, major back pain. If she came into my office like that, a person's not able to really receive the treatment that well, because they're just, you know, they're just so focused on the pain. And what I do is immediately work to reduce that pain level. So I may do some actual inserted needling. Leave those needles in while I engage the system to start the overall treatment. While I'm doing that, you know, the, the pain will reduce. You know, it will drop. The person relaxes. And then it's kind of like, ah. And then they can receive the treatment. So they receive the treatment. Guess what? Their systems are going to balance out. And then it's key to, you know, it depends upon, you know, what's disruptive in their system, meaning how out of balance, how long is it going to hold the treatment? So some people hold the treatment for a couple of days where it's feeling really good, and then it slowly starts to dissipate. So I, then I have a, an idea, okay, well, you know, a couple of days is not bad. If it only held for a day, it means that their system's really out of balance. Um, so it, it tells me, it gives me the feedback. Sometimes people hold on to the treatment for three or four days. Sometimes I'll get them, treat the person in a week, and it's like, wow, you know, the system's really helped them out. Because I can tell that when I check out the pulses, which tell me it's not just the speed of the pulse, but how the whole system is doing. You know, by looking at their tongue, and you know, doing the differential diagnosis on their abdomen by palpation that I use. So all these tools allow me to understand how the body is, and the, and the mind, and the spirit are doing. So, any questions? I mean, this is just short, very short yeah. time, but, but it did how do you feel? It did help a little bit in here, too. Yeah. Now, what I want you to do is apply some heat to that area. Not yeah. us, heat. Heat. Heat is good. Go get some extra strength <coughs> tiger bomb. Rub it on your shoulder. Okay. That's going to be really good. Heat. Tiger bomb? Oh, tiger bomb. Yeah. Easy to yeah. get. Yeah. Good for next Yeah, I use that. Do you have a friend or a husband or somebody like that you can rub it on for you? No, I can rub it. All right, all right, yeah. good, because that's, that'll yeah. Yeah. Because I had that needle, you know, from the pain. Well, the needle helped yeah. get that back into a little better state of balance. I didn't give you yeah, a full yeah, treatment. Yeah, you use an MSA um, something like that. They recommend that. Well, MSN is yeah, a good Yeah, they just started thing. last week, and it's helping a little bit. It's a good product to help. Uh, what MSN? Well, it's it's like, like an ointment. Yeah, well, it's a, MSM is a constituent that, that relaxes the muscles. Yes. What, what's also good... For inflammation. More for relax, relaxation. There's a lot of other good things for, for both inflammation, mm -hmm. uh, aloe vera juice. You know, if you go to my booth, I can talk to you about some of this. Oh. But, um, you know, other things that uh, work well are just your diet. Eat a lot of green leafies because that has a good magnesium content. Guess what magnesium does? Two things. Relaxes the muscle, enhances, for you lady, enhances uh, uh, calcium absorption. And you also ought to know this, to enhance calcium absorption, you target it so it doesn't calcify inside of arteries or elsewhere, or build up too much to cause osteoarthritis. So make sure you have enough vitamin K2. Oh. K2 in your diet. And you can you can get on the internet and you can look for certain foods. Generally speaking, fermented foods have a lot of K2 in it. What's that? Fermented foods. So like tempeh, natto, but a lot of different fermented foods. So sauerkraut, no, I mean anything that's fermented is gonna have a, a reasonably good measure of K2 in it. But you know, I have a lot of my patients, including myself, I take a probiotic that's fermented that has a lot of K2 in it. So, but that, a lot of people don't know about that connection. So these I are all things just you can do. Just like you put it in for my hip replacement, it's in my ear. Oh. Here yesterday. Oh. Wonderful. How are you doing? Knee replacement. Really? I'm walking okay. I'm walking yeah. out here. You were out here doing the, uh, the exercises earlier? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. 
so talk about that. You work all your life, then get old and get sick. Well, it looks like you're not, it looks like you're moving. But I have to. What? I'm sorry. Well, I was wondering, so, so people would yeah. go to not necessarily because they have pain, they could probably go probably to you for ongoing health? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean. I, that's ultimately. Yeah, I mean. In China, yeah. thousands of years ago, people yeah. would pay <laughs> the Chinese doctor to stay well, not yeah, when they got well, sick. That's so that's ultimately, that's ultimately right, right. Yeah. But most people come to me because there's some sort of pain issue yeah. or something like that. Did you say K2? Vitamin K2. With the, the fermentation? Right. If you Google it, you can find out about the foods that, uh, that you can eat for that. Sauerkraut, you said, right? Yeah, and that's loaded with good probiotics. Too. Yeah. You say, um, Olive? Aloe vera juice. Yeah, it's really good for anti-inflammatory, but good for the digestive system too. Yeah. But you got to make sure that you get a good product. Yes, there's a product that I recommend, but it's important to get a good product. You don't want too much aloe in it. Well, you can have all kinds of things that you don't know that they're in different places. Right. You got to be careful. K two on the internet. Yes. Just what do you put in? You Google it. Yeah, just put uh, vitamin K two. Foods with vitamin K two. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good weekend for you. That was perfect. Tell you more about all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Some other class? Oh, no, yeah. do you mind that we're filming? Oh, no, that's okay. fine. Um, so, I guess we'll get started. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Sue Levy, um, and I am a nutritionist and a natural foods chef. Good. And I'm the founder of Savory Living, which is a company dedicated to helping people make healthy eating. So if I asked you a question, like, would you ever conceive of letting our kids go become adults without learning math? What no. would you say? No. No, right? Why? Well, because it's so important. It's important. It's a skill they need to survive in the world. Well, I would say that eating is exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. Yet we just expect people to learn and know how to do it on their own, right? Yeah. We don't teach people how to eat well. And that's what I do. I pair nutrition information with delicious food ideas and give people the cooking and flavoring skills they need to shift how they eat to better line up with what the experts recommend about eating to support your health. So the people I work with are people that care about this and want to make healthy eating happen. And maybe it's because they're carrying extra belly fat, which they know is actually harmful, linked to inflammation, linked to diseases. Maybe they're high blood pressure. They have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides. I live with a cancer, so I know firsthand kind of eating to support and manage cancer. Also had a lot of digestive problems too, and all of that I managed through diet, which was tremendous. Um, I work with people across the board, and I work with people privately to develop healthy eating plans. I also teach online cooking and healthy eating classes so people from all over the states and all over the world have taken my Eating Well For You classes and program. I teach inside companies like Microsoft. They run my curriculum. But what I'm here today to do is to, in five minutes, hopefully give you some tips that you can leave with and do something with. Okay, so you ready? What I wanna say is it's really all about the food because it is. How you eat impacts how you feel. It impacts your moods. And you have to love how you eat. So if you try to turn healthy eating into a diet, you will fail. Most of us have tried it, right? And the reason why you fail is it's rigid. You focus more on what you can eat, the things that you love are ripped from your day, you're deprived, you're angry, maybe it works, you lose seven pounds or so, for the, but then six months after yeah. you stop, you gain that plus more back. Diets fail. So to succeed, you have to turn this into a lifestyle. And I'm gonna share three tips with you that I found in coaching all the clients that I work for that really make the difference, okay? So the first thing is, you have to ground this in 
a fundamental belief of why this matters for you. If this is just, oh, I want to eat healthy, you won't make it happen because we're changing a lifetime of how you ate. So you have to fundamentally believe that how you eat matters. And I'm here to tell you that it does, okay? But then you have to take it a step further and say, what do you have to gain and what do you have to lose if you don't take action? And for every person, that's different. For me, it was, I want to slow my lung disease down. I want to stop being on all these digestive medications. I want to lose 30 pounds. I want to have better energy so I can chase after my two young girls. And for me, every day, that keeps me doing it. And I, this is my second career. <laughs> I didn't start caring about nutrition. I was in advertising and marketing selling crazy foods to people. But I needed to because of the health cost. And if you put this in place and figure out why it matters to you, you will succeed at it if you do the next thing, which is pick up the skills you need. Mm -hmm. And those skills are understanding how food works inside the body, what you need to eat more of, and what you need to eat less of. And that's what I'll talk about next, okay? Food is like people. It's not all good, and it's not all bad. Right? There's some people you go to when you need support for this, other people you go to when you need support for this, people you stay away from when you realize not so good at this for me, right? Food is exactly the same way. You can eat everything, but what you want to do is eat more of some foods, less of others. That creates the balance, and let me tell you which ones. The things you want to eat more of are the foods that are rich in nutrients, that give you what you need and are lower in sugar. What is that? That's vegetables, that's dark leafy greens, that's beans, seeds, nuts, avocados, olives, healthy proteins, right? Mm -hmm. Animal proteins too. The foods you wanna eat less of are the ones that are higher in sugar and that, I'll, I'll start talking about them. The first one is grains. Grains are higher in sugar than the other fruits and vegetables that I talked to you about. Does it mean they're, 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 you know, they're bad because they're higher in sugar? No, 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 there's a lot of nutrients in whole grains. You want them, but you don't want to have so much of them. What Harvard recommends is keep your grains to one to two servings a day. The reason why is sugar. Okay, so what's a serving? A serving is a slice of bread, half a cup of cooked pasta or oatmeal or cereal, half a bagel, and I can see your face, right? Wait a minute. We grew up with this pyramid that yeah. said, had six to 11 servings, why are you telling me one to two? And they are saying now, oh my gosh, we got it wrong. Yeah. We made a mistake. It was a very bad mistake because we got heavier and heavier. Yeah. Diabetes is up, heart disease is up, cancer. It was a bad uh, pyramid and they changed it. But most of us grew up eating that way. So that's number one, we wanna eat less grains. Have them, make them whole, but decide where you wanna have them. Doesn't mean you don't have them. You say, I have one to two, my daughter. Right? Kids, if you left them alone, all they would have are grains. People too, because they taste great. So I'll say to her, we're going to a party that night, a kid's birthday party. You're going to have cake, it's a grain. You're going to have pizza, it's a grain. So let's not have a waffle for breakfast. Let's have something else. Right? You decide. You have the freedom. Second thing you want to contain is dairy. The reason why is dairy is linked to cancers and really? other issues. Yes. So Harvard recommends, and they say, have no more than, they don't say have, they say have no more than one to two servings of dairy a day. A serving, a cup of milk, a cup of yogurt, cottage cheese, right? One slice of cheese. They've actually since come out against the children's recommendations because they're basically saying, you know what, we've been recommending too much dairy for our kids. Yeah, because of bones, right? But the reality is that calcium comes in fourth on that list of what matters for bone health. There's other things that are really important, like the movement, right? Vitamin D, vitamin K, which is in the dark leafy yeah. greens that you can't take in a pill. Okay, let's see, I talked about the two that you wanna contain, right? So the first principle you're gonna say to yourself is this matters to me because of X, Y, and Z, right? Then you say I'm gonna eat more of some foods, I'm gonna eat less of other foods, right? What you want to do is contain your sugar. I'll give you a figure. Anytime you're eating a packaged processed foods, you can have sugar 26 grams a day. Add it up. It's listed on the panel. You decide where. The average American is having three times the amount that our bodies were ever designed to handle. That's. Let's see. I talked to you about what to eat less of. 
Uh, the third thing I want to talk to you about is include indulgences. You can have your sweets, you can have the things that you love, you just don't have them all the time. Liberate yourself that way and you won't rebel. And when I teach and in my program I say, include a daily indulgence, I want to see it on your log that I'm checking. And what I find and what the data show is people that include things they love and how they eat do better long term. So focus what you want to eat more of. And if you're off balance, you got to identify the foods you're not digesting well. That was a huge, hugely transformative part of all of it for me. What yeah. are those fruit, fruit and juices? Okay, so yes, great question. And that would fall in the sugar category. So all natural fruits, there's a couple exceptions, are usually a low glycemic load food. That's under 10 in the glycemic load way of evaluating them. Fruits are high. So let me give you perspective. If I said to you, would you drink a can of regular Coke? From a sugar standpoint, would you drink it? No, I don't drink Coke. Okay, but you'd say, no, it's a lot of sugar, right? The glycemic load of a can of Coke is 16, so it's middle, okay? That glycemic load of a fruit juice is 25. Dried fruits, 26. So you don't, you don't want to be, eat your fruits, because they're usually in the eight range. The only fruits that are higher in sugar, and I play with this with people that really are running into, they want to lose their belly fat, they're off, that's bananas, papayas, mangoes, um, grapes are mid, one more, pineapple. Pineapple. And put our, our mid, so they're more sugar. So if you want to, if you really want to lose the weight, you've got to eat the lower sugar stuff. So no pineapple. Well, I'm not saying no. That could be your yes. indulgence, right? Yes. yes. I'm out of it. But what are the other fruits you're crowding in, right? Well, I like pineapples and mostly a lot of great fruits. Mm -hmm. Okay, fruits in the low camp. So, so for instance, yeah. an apple. An apple is in under eight. Grams. Yeah, you so, well, there's you a, but there's two, there's two ways that I, there's two ways that you'll control sugar. Right. In packaged processed foods, oh, yeah. do the 26. The rest of the time, yeah. you want to be eating more low glycemic right. load natural right. foods. So if we shift how you're eating to get you eating more, like half of what you, day you eat a day should be vegetables and fruits. Right. Grains should be no more than one to two. Yeah. We will dramatically change how much sugar is coming into the day. And how do you get all your beans? You well, you can have the whole grains. You're having one to two servings a day. So you're getting your B vitamins plus. Those B, the magnesium, fiber there in so many of the other foods, provided you're eating to pull in those vegetables, those beans, those seeds, those nuts. But I'm not saying, remember, this is the challenge with healthy eating, like the way we've all been brought up, you, you almost want to categorize it as, I can't ever have. Oh, yeah. And that's not what I'm saying. Sure. You have the grains, but you got to contain it yeah. to one to two. So let's right. play it out. You want Italian food. Love mm -hmm. pasta, right? I don't do well with gluten, so I have my brown rice pasta. Before I knew all of this, I would have a huge plate of pasta and some red sauce. Wow, that's like yeah. over my two servings a day of grains, right? So now what I do is I say, all right, I gotta get vegetables in. I cram my dark leafy greens in. I throw some frozen spinach and I got some sauteed yeah. onions, some mushrooms, some zucchini. I make a lot of vegetables, throw it in that tomato sauce. Yeah. I bumped up the vegetables I'm eating in that less pasta. So you can have it. You're just proportion is what we're playing. You guys have other questions? Well, I, I have a problem with losing weight. I don't mean to yes. talk about it. No, no, no. I work with people that have that. I actually work with a lot of people with that issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I know it gets annoying to other people. But I, have, I had a big drop in weight at one point, and now I want to keep up to about like Okay, so now here's the thing. You can get calories. For, like, I, I'm not interested in pumping you up with more sugar. Like, what I would rather we do is get more calorie-dense, lower-sugared, healthy, nutrient-rich foods into you. So, like, I would look at the healthier fats. Like, I don't know if you're eating avocados. The nuts are great. Um, hummus is a great one. Do you eat that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd want to also look at how you're eating and make sure you're properly paired. Um, especially as you get older, you want to make sure that you're including enough protein every time you're eating. 
so there's this thing that they call two-to-one eating, and that's anti-inflammatory eating, so I know he was talking about things you can do to help you with inflammation, and that's all well and good, but you yeah. gotta get your eating settled. Right. Right. And that's gotta get the sugar down, and you yeah. gotta pair your food in a two-to-one ratio when you're eating. You need protein in every snack you have, every meal you have. So two-to-one. Two Think about two, a plate. Two, two, uh, a ratio of two, pro two protein and no, one. one protein, sorry. One two protein. parts vegetable or fruit. Okay. So let's say you're gonna have a snack, like okay. instead of having just that apple, you need to pair sure. it with some protein. So is it a handful of almonds? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, butter. sorry, almond butter, awesome, yeah. Is it clementines and pistachios? I teach my four-year-old, and she'll talk about, I need the protein, mom, I want, I want to have slivered almonds with, she's very particular. <laughs> but basically the great proteins are the beans, the bean dips, right? And I made a great bean salad, you can try it if you haven't yet, at my table. Um, but yeah, so you want that two to one. So I would want to really look at, I mean, I want to come up with a healthy eating plan for you to get you to your goal. No, on the other way. Yeah, but that, and that's, yeah, it's cool too. But I, I mean, did I tell you the measurement you want to get? Like, there's, um, they used to think that BMI, so they used to think that BMI was the indicator of health. And then they ran into this problem where some people were overweight and didn't get disease, yet other people were overweight and did, like, what, what was going on? And they realized, Oh my God, it's where you carry your weight that matters. My cholesterol is low, my high blood pressure. So but here's what I would tell you, it's very simple. You wanna know if you're at risk for things? Measure your waist circumference. If you are, as a woman, at 35 or higher, you're at risk. And that because that means there's inflammation in your system. And inflammation destroys the healthy blood vessels, causes all the problems, gets you to heart disease. I mean, what they think now is, heart disease, cholesterol, triglycerides, all of that, they were telling people, lower your saturated fat and have no cholesterol, but what they think now is like, oh my gosh, it's more about that belly fat and that sugar and that insulin response. And we gotta manage it that way and you have far more success. I work with people with those conditions and we get the, their eating better lined up. Mm -hmm. They lose the weight, but their numbers change. Chad, we need a session like you and my vision. We have a nutrition once a week, once a month. Okay. It's a new month. But uh, we need to you know all these things. And you need to learn how to flavor food. Yeah. So like that's what I'm passionate about teaching yeah. people too. So you'll see I took a bean salad, which I want you eating more of, and I had beautiful roasted um, fennel in it, right? And I took it to the Middle East. So it's got, it's in an orange Dijon uh, vinaigrette that has a little bit of cumin, a little bit of mint, mm -hmm. a little bit of parsley, right? That's delicious, but let's say you don't like mid Middle Eastern foods. You want Italian. Make a bean salad taste Italian. Make it taste Mexican, make, make it taste Greek. Like once you understand how to flavor balance mm -hmm. and go, that's the key to unlocking, not getting bored, eating more of what you want, and uh, liberating yourself from <laughs> recipes. And is that how you make the snack too? Yeah, so I teach the two to one is kind of how it all pretty much works, yeah. And, but you give people choices. And I use the, um, the thing I, I told you about, like I teach at the JCCs and I teach the, the we talk to the parents and the kids and the, this idea of you can have everything. You just eat more of some things mm -hmm. and less of others. So you liberate the person and let them decide. So it stops being you saying, you can't have that. It's, my daughter will be like, can I have the, you know, I really want to have that, um, those crackers. And I'm like, great, this was your day. Where'd you go with grains today? Are you there, are you not? And the funny thing about the indulgence is too, even with kids, like, they're much more like draconian than you ever think they would be. You know, so I'll say to her, like, we, we have sweets, but we don't have them all the time. And so she said, I really want that ice cream sandwich that's in the freezer. And I said, great, so what, what are we gonna do if we have them, but we don't have them all the time? And she's four and a half, and she said, okay, mama, we'll have it one day, then we won't have it, then we won't have it, then we'll have it another day. My husband was like, why did she go like every other day? Why did she go, you know, but yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, the decision. did she get this out? Yeah, and it's her decision, you know, and I think that's why it works with adults too, because it's not, and if you go to my website, you'll see testimonials, like it's not a diet, it's just a way of thinking about it, and there'll be some days that you do better than others. Okay, yeah, and so that you can. is a punishment sound these days, it's a reason for you now. Yeah, I had the jokes Oh, diet right. food, and she said, oh, this is diet. I can and it doesn't eat. taste good. Can make it? Well, oh, okay. I can eat tons of it. Right. Like totally. I'm having a diet because I'm going to eat less and get very simple less. Yeah. But the other factor that's really critical is you should feel different when you're eating right for you. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And if you don't, then you're, it's not right. You know, it's not about I'm eating so I don't get this or it's the right thing to do. It's like, whoa, I can, I'm not crashing at 3 o'clock. My pants fit better. I just feel better. And that's what you think about this dark chocolate craze that's going on that you should have 65% or 75% dark chocolate. What do you think about it? I, you know, here's where I'm humbled enough to say there's so much they don't know about nutrition. And there are so many studies that are complicated and confusing, and they tell you it's good, then they tell you it's bad, then they tell you, and that's why I believe it's all about moderation. So I think there's enough evidence to say dark chocolate is better for you than milk, but if you don't like dark chocolate, why would you eat something you don't like? There's no need to. There's no particular miracle for it's just a little no. bit of each of the Ah, great sound bite. Totally right. There isn't one elixir, you know? Yeah. They say it's good for your brain. I don't know. But you know what? Then great. And if you like the flavor of it, that's your little indulgence a day. But if you turn that into, I'm eating tons of dark chocolate, well, then you're pulling in tons of sugar. Right? So like I said, food isn't only one factor. There's sugar in that. There's the great, uh, I forget what they call flavonoids, that are, that's in the dark chocolate that's awesome for you. You know, but there's a whole range of things that you're weighing against each other. So I think that a, that a, a balanced diet is, I, I don't even like to say that you're a balanced diet, I think you should move towards an unbalanced diet, pulling in more of the really good for you stuff, including the sweet indulgences and keeping those grains and the dairy contained. And you do that, what's that? Very good. Good, any other questions? I do, I have cards, I have some samples. And well, it's not that much Thank you. Vegetables are okay. fabulous. You gotta learn how to cook them. I teach people yeah. inside the oven, on top of the stove. Yeah. Tons of techniques, yeah. Okay. Eat the rainbow, and I don't mean Skittles. Ladies. <laughs> I'm gonna try to, uh, to present everything that you can eat. So the idea, I think it's a frame of mind that it is work that helps you reclaim your best So I'm going to have you 
spreading into the shoe down to the ground, okay? Okay. So, so from the sit bones, we're just gonna pull a little bit, deepen up the sit. Now how was that? That felt really effortless, actually. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> effortless, nice, it was yeah. active, okay? And how was your back? It feels good, it doesn't, it, yeah, it, there's not a lot of pressure on my back. Exactly, because the first time when she got up by herself, she, she said her back was bothering her, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, but this time when you got up, you didn't feel your back, did you? Not really. <laughs> so now, <coughs> now I'm gonna, don't you lose your, okay. yeah. <laughs> we go in and out of, of space because we have joints, and joints, people have, Sore joints because when they stretch their body, and then the joints are complaining. So, like here, her back was complaining. So once you use yourself to your mm. organic stretch, the body has no reason to complain. And what happens is then you create what I call healing space. So if she integrated that field of movement, whatever she feels in her back would go away. So, so now we're gonna sit down. And so how do we sit down? You don't have to lose that beautiful alignment. You're just going to think um, squatting. You're going to think that you let the knees and the toes go, go forward. Both mm -hmm. knees and toes go. Knees, more knees, more knees. You then go past the shoulders and knees. Yeah. More knees, more knees. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Yeah. And there you go. <laughs> See how easy that was? Yeah, that was really easy. Yeah. And then you know, those two really prevent from each other so that you can be up again and easy.
what you were aware, right? right? And so oh. if they don't know anything about their household interests, right. they wouldn't be aware of how much tension they're doing and how much they're pulling right and left, but they won't know how to get to that sweet spot on the end. Right. And everybody who's been doing yoga, they'll tell you when you get to that place of balance, it's wonderful, everything seems to work together. But they work at it, they're pulling, pushing, and that is not necessary. When you know how to activate your partial reflexes, you can get to that sweet spot, spot on demand. You're in front of your computer and you notice an old pattern. You can just plug into your partial reflexes and it sends you up and out with a lot of ease. With no pulling, no pushing, no holding. And this is really priceless. And I don't even have a yoga body, but I can do Kubatist yoga because I'm using my Alexander. And I'm horrified when I see it in the way people use themselves. But I can do Baptist yoga. I know I just keep plugging into my postural reflexes. So if something's not good for me, my body tells me. So you see, people listen to their body feelings, but they don't know how to listen to their body's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that's what I teach, so that then you have that accessible income. And just telling Amy before that I have two sons, and um, they were into kayaking, rock climbing, archery. I was able to do all those things fairly easily because I was using my Alexander. But with my height and you know, I'm compact, I've got lots of muscles, and mm -hmm. I could, could have been really difficult, you know, and even on the yoga mat. Sometimes I plug into the postural reflexes and it tells me, no, do it differently. Or, or, you know, I just listen and it guides me. So I don't even need the teacher to help me. And it's a good thing because often when a yoga class is 20 people, they don't have time. You know? so, so that's also why uh, more recently I've been doing this work on five years. And you're welcome to sit oh. down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been doing this for 25 years, and more recently I decided to bring that skill to the yoga community. That's why I'm uh, creator of the Mat Yoga, and I'm offering some um, presentation and some uh, workshops, oral workshops. I have a workshop actually for yoga teachers coming up uh, in the yoga school in uh, JP. And I think that it's going to be the way of the future, because right now, in the yoga world, in the fitness world, mm -hmm. people focus only on what they feel in their muscle, and they try to, to, to focus just on, on the pose, on the form, and they, they, that's why there's an increase. More and more people do yoga and, and gym and all that, but they don't want to increase the injuries, and that's because they're missing that little piece of it. So you have ongoing classes, and do you do it through you or through an organization? Good question. Um, so I've been teaching uh, some classes through the adult ed uh, all of us at the time. And uh, what I have is um, is a safe stretch for everyone, which is way more, it's not just about stretching. I do stretching, strengthening, balancing, and relaxing. It's everything you do in yoga, but we do it um, including the Alexander technique. Oh, so it's all part of the, you would learn the Alexander it's you know some. So not not as much as if you take my Alexander oh, okay. introduction. I have that. It's starting next week actually. Okay. I'm also um, offering ongoing uh, workshop and um, info workshop and all this. Um, I have some coming up on Friday today. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, I'm also trying to give you a space so I can do my own classes. Because the way I do that safe stretch um, I I like to do it in a way that's not so structured. I like to include dancing. I like to yeah. include, to, and I like it to be a social thing too, like you know, letting people express themselves. And, and so it's it's a very unique. When I took that, the yoga teacher from the at the last minute, so she said, "Oh, I need to do up the mat yoga. Can you teach that?" And I did, and people have been saying that it's uh, unique, fun, and practical, and that's because of the Alexander technique you mentioned. this work, even if you, you know, some people say, well, I can do full time a session, whatever, try a workshop, try a class, come to one private session that's tailored to you, you're going to learn a lot. Like, you see, if she could experience that in two minutes, mm -hmm. you can imagine, you know, how, how much you can get. And in a private session, I can also put you on the table 
and I can do work with my hands and she can just chill out. <laughs> that, that helps your body, I really put your postural mechanism. So it helps the verbal and rhythmic brain of the inside. Um, so I have a problem with getting in the habit of it. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Doing it. Yeah, but that's when, when yeah. it's part of the group or you have a teacher or whatever, right. it really helps you. So I have a motion of time. I could be like two minutes. more minutes. Okay, two more minutes. Right here in Brooklyn Village, it's the Bobo Adam, and I also 
to work from my home office in South Japan. So, thank you. Well, you're to know your body. I, mean, your body. I hear you yes. saying you can do all these other things. Exactly, but, but if you, you don't know, know how it's first. meant, yeah, and having the experience, because yeah. if it's a head thing, yeah. like, oh, posture is good, but yeah. if people, it's a head thing, yeah. you use your muscle yeah. to control your skeleton. Yeah. But the muscle, your mind is supposed to have an idea of movement, yeah. and then your muscles and your skeleton are supposed to work together. Yeah. But if you control your skeleton with your muscles, you're not listening to your body wisdom. And that, unfortunately, is something that's very widespread. It's like mind-body. I mean, you get to know you have to meditate. So for the body. Yeah, it's going to be so happy in a minute. You have to know your body in order to incorporate it with your mind. Well, the mind and the body actually are the two sides of the same coin. Yeah, and right. and yeah. so this century, I, I've been talking about mind-body, but sometimes yeah. people, they go to the gym to do their, their Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they go to their therapist to do their yeah. meditation, yeah. and they think they're addressing the mind body, but it's not the way that it has been. So, if it's integrated, you know because you don't have the desire to stop. You don't, you know, you don't know it. But most people, you go to yoga, and everybody's like trying to straighten everything. And then they, the class ends, and they go in the reading changing room, and they take their, their iPhone, and suddenly they're like this, suddenly they disconnect the neck from the rest of the body. So it shows to me that the, it, no matter how much into yoga they are, if they do that, they haven't integrated, they're not integrated. 